You were, of course, uh, during the election, Labour's campaigns and election chairman. You remain the, the, the national election coordinator, so you'll certainly have a view on this. Why on earth is Jared O'Mara still an MP? Well, of course, there's now an investigation, and I think it's right that he's been suspended from the uh, Labour Party and that uh, due process will now take place, where uh, obviously the very serious uh, concerns that have been raised, rightly, about uh, some of the tweets that he's posted in the past, will be fully investigated. And it's right that we root out any misogyny, sexism, homophobia and racism in the Labour Party. Uh, we, sh we should, though, consider the chronology of events. Yep, an investigation is uh, now underway, but despite a party spokesman saying that the first they'd heard of this was, was just days ago, actually, we now know Labour HQ knew about this you know, back in September. You were made aware of the, 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 the earliest comments that he made about poofters and fudge packers, of all things, about Jamie Cullum being sodomised by his own piano. You and Mr O'Mara did nothing until the reports were made public. Why not? Well, I didn't know about these things, and I find those comments absolutely despicable. And let me make it absolutely clear, there is no place in the Labour Party for homophobia, for sexism, for misogyny and for racism. But, but Mr and Corbyn, it is, Mr. Corbyn and, and didn't it is, think, and Mr it Corbyn is, didn't think that they were absolutely reprehensible. You know, Mr O'Mara wasn't a child when he made these comments, he wasn't a teenager, he was an adult. Now, and despite making comments which, as you concede, are homophobic in the extreme, at the meeting of the PLP at which Mr O'Mara stood up and apologised, Mr Corbyn then stood up, said we should accept that apology and do you know what, hold on to that seat on, of all things, the Equalities Committee. No, I'm not sure that that is actually the case. I think what you will find is that Jeremy Corbyn has called out misogyny and sexism and racism and did homophobia. He not, did he not say that we should accept this apology from Mr O'Mara and that he should continue on the Equalities Committee? Jared O'Mara has been suspended from the Labour Party. That is the right course of action and there is an investigation that I don't want to prejudice, but nevertheless, those views are reprehensible and they have no place in a modern democracy. I'm, I'm just trying to work out what, what actually changed within, within the party hierarchy. Those comments made in 2002 and 2004, which seemed to have been dismissed because he was a bit younger when he made them and he's been on a, a journey of all things since then. But in 2009, five years after he first stood for the Labour Party, he was referring online to a rhythm section tighter than your mother's ex, a, a band better than Felicio from Angelina Jolie. Now, now, that was enough to suspend him, but comments about fudge packers and poofters, that, that's OK. Look, it's all disgusting, and I think we let the investigation take place and we let due process happen. <laughs> the problem is this. You know, let me put a proposition to you. Anyone, of course, can become a Member of Parliament if they get enough votes. Not everyone should be a Member of Parliament. Mr O'Mara may not be a, a, a sexist, a homophobe, a racist, but he's clearly an idiot. And as part of the investigation, we need to look at how the procedures for selection uh, and uh, the uh, choice of Mr O'Mara were adhered to by the party. Uh, that is part of the investigation because nobody holding those views in my view, has a place in modern democracy. It's just I'm struggling to understand why comments that were made slightly earlier in the first decade of this millennium you know, were considered to be less extreme than comments made towards the tail end. He was in his 20s throughout that process, and it's insulting, isn't it, to people of that age to suggest like, it's the type of thing you say when you're young. Well, I didn't say those things when Neither I was did young, I. and I find them reprehensible. There's no excuse for those, uh, those comments, and uh, I think that we let the investigation take due process. I mean, isn't, isn't there a problem, though, with, with, within the party that you, you don't ha necessarily have enough oversight of the, pr the process by which someone like Mr O'Mara, pushed forward by momentum, you know, ultimately ends up taking a seat in the House. And he did sign that document, didn't he, that said there is nothing in my past that can bring the party into disrepute. I mean, when the first comments came to light, he should have been suspended at that point, shouldn't he? Well, I'm not sure what the process was when those uh, first comments did come to light. That's not something that I've been made aware of. But I think it's absolutely right that the Labour Party has suspended him pending an investigation. Now, let that investigation happen. Uh, just in terms of the procedures that were within the party, I mean, Mr Corbyn has said that there has to be a proper system of people being able to report if they feel abused. Our party, the Labour Party, has a process uh, for doing that uh, for party members who 
feel they've been abused in any way. I mean, do you think that the procedures are robust enough? Um, I think they are, if they're used correctly. And I think that um, where people feel that they have been abused, that they should have the confidence to come through the party uh, processes that are in place uh, to make uh, their views known and let the party deal with it. If there needs to be changes to the party rules, then that's something that a Labour conference in the future will consider, the National Executive Committee will consider. But the point is, there are processes and there are rules in place to prevent this kind of thing. I'm going, I'm going to submit that the procedures that are in place are, 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 not, up to, are not up to scratch. I mean, take this, um, an anonymous female Labour councillor, you know, writing in The Guardian. I mean, she said, I'm ashamed of the way the Labour Party currently handles some cases of harassment, some abuse and assault brought to them by its members. In my experience of reporting such behaviour to the party, I have felt completely let down. My complaint was swept under the carpet and the perpetrators continue to play a part in my everyday life within the party. No complaint should be swept under the carpet. And I think, so what are you doing well, about well, it? I think we need to look very carefully if this is the kind of uh, thing that is happening, if people are saying that this is happening, then perhaps the National Executive Committee need to look at... Perhaps? Um, well, you've given one anonymous quote. Well she, went, well, she went on to repeat her story a number of times to a number of different people within the party. She said that there's no way under the current rules that you can link, you know, connecting patterns of behaviour, the experiences of different women to, to a single perpetrator. I mean, th these, these are party members making this complaint. And it's on top of a litany of complaints that have been made about the internal party procedures within Labour. Well, then, you know, we have to look at making sure that members have the confidence in the rules and the procedures that are in place to deal with these situations. I don't want any member of the Labour Party, whether they are uh, a card-carrying member, an activist, a councillor or a member of Parliament, to feel that there is one rule for one set of members and another rule for others. We are all one family in the Labour Party and we adhere to those rules and that we adhere to... The the expectations, you know, we are a democratic party, but there is no place for misogyny, for racism, for sexism and for homophobia. But all of those things, as we've just mentioned, currently exist within the Labour Party. I mean, the, the problem for Mr Corbyn is, I'll submit this, you know, we've been talking about abuse of power in a variety of forms, you know, for, for, for decades, you know, child sexual abuse the abuse of women within the workplace. I mean, it's, it's nothing new. Mr Corbyn has identified this warped culture that pervades Westminster. It hasn't suddenly emerged overnight, mm. but it's taken action in Hollywood and, you know, the actions of a, one Labour, you know, recent appointee's MP, for the Labour Party to even start talking about it, not even do anything about it, but start talking about it. And, of course, this isn't just an issue for the Labour Party. It's an issue for politics at large. I, I will, I will as agree. See, as as we see from, uh, well, as bad as you know, and it is a plague on all our houses. And we have to make sure that certainly Parliament, if we are making the laws against some of these things, we need to make sure that we ourselves uphold those laws and those standards. And I am quite frankly appalled by some of the stories that I've read today. You and me both. Um, well, well, let's um, dwell for a second on, on your brief. Um, uh, local government and a real focus for you moving forward is, is children's care. I mean, you're of the opinion that we're, we're heading into a crisis. We'll be talking mental health as regards children in a while, but, but establish your position. Well, of course, a lot of the um, concerns that there have been about local government finance in recent years has been looking at the problems of adult social care. And the government have, uh, over the past few years, um, brought forward a number of sticking plasters um, to try and ease the council's problems um, and so what we are now seeing in a lot of councils is the problems surfacing in children's services. Uh, children's services are underfunded by about £2 billion across the whole of England and that is causing real problems because of course these are statutory services. The council, if they are presented with safeguarding issues, they have to take on board those issues and they have to deal with them. It's not something that can be put aside uh, a budget column and to say well we've reached that budget they have to but take doesn't it. But doesn't it all in essence come down to funding though when we're talking about the provision? Well it comes into funding but it also comes into the wider sphere of public policy because many of the reasons that children are being uh, brought into the children's services sphere is because of the cuts elsewhere so things like cuts to Shore Start have been a very
very short-sighted cut, and it has meant that children and families are suffering elsewhere. I, I just want, want, whilst we have you, just to dwell on, on Brexit, there has been uh, something of a difficulty on the, the government benches this week about whether or not you, know, you will get a vote mm -hmm. at an appropriate point. If there is to be a vote of, of consequence in the House of Commons, it needs to happen before we leave the European Union, doesn't it? It absolutely does, and it needs to happen before the European Parliament have a vote on it as well. You know, we didn't vote to take back control, only to cede parliamentary sovereignty to ministers. We absolutely have to have that vote before both the European Parliament uh, and before Brexit happens. Is there any way, though, by which you can compel that? Well, I think through uh, our amendments in the, uh, the repeal bill... Wrecking amendments. Well, they're not wrecking amendments. This is about Parliament taking back control. If we believe in parliamentary sovereignty, it means that MPs have got to have the guts to say, this is what we want. And if we want a vote to ensure that our constituents are protected, you know, you don't jump out of a plane without a parachute. So we want to make sure that we've got that parachute strapped on. And that's what having that final vote before the European Parliament and before uh, we leave the European Union in uh, March 2019 happens.